that over 16,500 scouts and leaders have come to Collingwood Park in the city of Ipswich to enjoy an exciting, adventurous jamboree in a Queensland bush atmosphere. We are sure that this jamboree will equal the high standard. Uh, they're arriving by bus. They've come by plane and by train from all over Queensland. 3,200 boys and 700 leaders. The vanguard of the biggest scouting event seen in Australia. The Queenslanders are first in and they'll be the last out, so they'll have a little extra, a 12-day jamboree. Even so, for some, it was not without mixed emotions. After the mustering and the farewells, the 3,900 marched en masse to the jamboree site. Symbolically, it was the start of the jamboree and the end of three years of planning and extremely hard work. 2,000 volunteers cleared 175 hectares of virgin bush to carve out the site for 3,500 tents and create a city complete with roads, water supply, electricity and sewerage. All that for 10 days. But the boys have no doubt that it will be all worthwhile. Oh yeah, they've got go-karts and um, orienteering swimming, there's a, just stuff like that, normal skating, sports. It's going to be great fun. Tomorrow the rest of the 17,000 scouts will arrive. Every state is represented, so too are 25 nations from Britain to North America, the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Paul Michaels, Eyewitness News. Queenslanders will make up almost a quarter of the number of the people at the Australian Jamboree, not an unusual number for the home state, but when the contingent of 3,900 gathered in one place, you start to realise just how big this Jamboree is going to be, with more than four times this number taking part. Of course, it's the opportunity of a lifetime for any boy, but there were some mixed emotions as they said farewell to their parents. But all that was forgotten as soon as they formed up for the kilometre and a half march into camp. It was the symbolic start to the jamboree and the end to the massive job of planning. The scouts have been working toward this moment for three years. The statistics are staggering. It's cost over three million dollars to stage, but there was only one full-time official. Most of the work was done by the 2,000 volunteers. They cleared 175 hectares of virgin bushland to carve out a city for the three and a half thousand tents. They had electricity, roads, sewerage and water laid on. When you've got a community of 17,000 people, well, that's enough to officially classify it as a city. In fact, this Jamboree site has been officially called Jamba City, and it's got all the trappings of any community of this size. The city boasts its own post office, several banks, a fire station, and a 70-bed hospital and ambulance service. It also has its own radio and television stations, which broadcast within a range of about 35 kilometres. But back to the job of setting up camp. Now that occupied the scouts for much of the first day. They had to do it right. After all, this is to be their home for almost two weeks. Now round, round this corner. And now do that. The young scouts had to work hard to qualify to come to this jamboree. It's to get all, all those badges here. There to, so you have to get them if you want to come into the Jamboree and be a part of the Jamboree. What sort of badges are they? Um, that's a citizenship target, camp craft target, water safety target, and it, when you get those three, you get your Pioneer. And there'll be one more badge to be earned while they're here, the special Jamboree badge. That's achieved by taking part in the activities, which range from discovery tours of the district, both from the ground and from the air, learning how to make and throw a boomerang, canoeing, orienteering and mini bike riding. If you pass the activity you get a certain amount of points. You need 75 points to get the award, 75 points for 75 years of scouting. When the Jamboree gets underway officially, there'll be enough activity to keep the boys busy day and night for the full 10 days. And the variety will provide them with as much adventure as most boys get in a lifetime. Paul Michaels, Eyewitness Newsbreak. Hi, this is Lisa Wagner at 4SJ. Well, with 58 buses coming in all at once and things are starting to get really active here at the 13th Australian Jamboree, Collingwood Park, Ipswich. By this evening there'll be 17,000 of us here and you can see tents going up everywhere. I would like to 
like to say hello to everybody up at the hospital. We understand they've already had some customers this morning. Sprained ankles are the order of the day, so watch your step. And a special hello to 11-year-old Mark of Mandabra, who's hobbling around on crutches. I hurt my foot when I was trying to cut me and my staff. Trying to cut your staff? Yeah. You had to have a staff for the jamboree. Now, this is the thing that you came along on. It's uh, a bit of a wooden stick. How did you come across that? Um, next, next door to our troops, there's this scout leader from Victoria. And he asked if I'd like a crutch. There are 20 countries represented here at the Jamboree, and it's not difficult for anyone to see, or rather hear, which troop is from Singapore. We are from Singapore. Bally, bally, Singapore. How we get to Collingwood? How we get to Collingwood? We reply with a little bit of humor. I love our way by helicopter. Ayo, ayo. Ayo, ayo. Ayo, ayo. One of the problems at the Jamboree site is the dust and water sports attracted a lot of attention today. In today's heat, learning the basics of scuba diving was one way to stay cool. And the instructor had plenty of young students willing to duck their heads under the water to carry out his directions. Put your head back, right. And just lift a little bit off your face. And as you lift it off, you blow air through your nose, right? That expels all the water out of your mask. Just put it back down again. The other water sport popular at the Jamboree today was the total opposite of the cleanliness of the pool, the commando course. The young scouts revelled in the mud and couldn't get enough of it. Any combination appealed to them, from a full speed jump into the slop, a neck climb after struggling out of the mess through... <laughs> through to total immersion under a cargo net. Certainly something that couldn't be done in the average backyard. But there were other pursuits well removed from the water. How about a round of mini golf on a carefully prepared green of coal mine waste? Some of the putts were not quite up to championship standard. Persistence always wins out in the end. And there have been many golfers before our young scouting champion who have blamed the state of the greens. Tony Ryan, Eyewitness News. <laughs> Any city of 17,000 people has its health and hygiene problems. And a city under canvas with unsealed roads and thousands of very active scouts is naturally no exception. As much as possible at the Jamboree, everyone takes an interest in their own health and well-being. But there are some activities that don't go hand in hand with cleanliness, like the commando course. <laughs> For Jamboree Hygiene Officer Jack Roweeder, the job of keeping a close watch on more than 10,000 scouts is a full-time occupation. Well, the Hygiene uh, Officer's job is to look after the boys, to more or less make sure that they have a shower every day, that they're more or less they're going to the toilet every day, uh, that all their cooking equipment is properly cleaned, mm -hmm. and that um, their bedding is properly done and they're all, their washing is done every day. Mm, I suppose with all this dust around, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a problem. Well, it is a big problem and uh, this is the main thing that we've got to look at. Uh, as far as all their, their plates and that, well, you will get a certain amount of dust in it. Well, if they're not washed properly, well, then you will start to get all the germs in it. The health care for Jamba City, as it's known, is in the hands of an Army Reserve unit from Brisbane. The full unit is on strength from doctors to a pathology section. They're dealing with everything from cuts and bruises to a case of the mumps. But unit commander, Major Greg O'Dowd, also has to deal with a problem in few medical books, homesickness. Oh, they cry and want to ring mum. Uh, I had a 10 minute talk to console mum last night. But it was a shame for a boy to pay his fees and come a long way and then sort of give it in on the first night. And it's important to build his, for him, for him to enjoy his camp, to build up his own confidence in himself so that he also has the opportunity to enjoy a great activity. It's good uh, for the lad to get the enjoyment he's come to rather than be totally disappointed and think oh, a year later, oh, I missed out. So it's important for the boy to have a great camp and we hope to do that for all of them. Life at Jamba City will continue at full speed for the next week and a half. The Jamboree's 10-day schedule is packed with energy testing events like this. So behind the scenes and the grime, there has to be a fairly efficient domestic situation. It's not like home, but most scouts seemed very adaptable when coping with the necessities, though some were after a bit of female supervision. 
There are 16 and a half thousand boys in the camp and they're split into more manageable groups of 40 per troop. From each of these, there's a special duty patrol chosen daily. And among other things, they cope with culinary needs. You get any complaints about the food when you're oh, on patrol? Yeah. Usually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. A couple bit of rubbish. But at least there's no shopping. All the food comes through a central supply area which has detailed pre-planned menus and control of the various truckloads that are delivered right to the scouts' tents. The various nationalities represented might have posed a problem with food preferences, but they've either made some arrangement or do as the Japanese contingent do, eat Australian. We have no trouble to adapt ourselves. Appetites can always be spoilt with an ice cream, but the organisers say the management of supplies is up to the boys themselves in the end. Robin Parkin, Eyewitness News. For once, mothers can look on and smile. This time, they don't have to clean up the mess. Wet and soggy clothes and bedding are strewn everywhere. Tent ropes are doing double duty as makeshift clotheslines and sleeping bags are in at the dry cleaners. Wherever you go, there's mud and water. The scouts were prepared for rain, but not for the sort of rain that you get in Queensland at this time of the year. Oh, it was pretty bad, around about uh, half past one we had eight inches of water running right through this water channel here. Uh, the boys were inundated, the water was coming in that fast, it was coming over the top of their ground sheets. At virtually the bottom ten shifted the boys out still on their lilos. Just to make sure they don't get caught twice, the scouts were making the trenches considerably deeper. But even at scout jamborees, some mums can't get away from the work. But what did the boys think of last night's downpour? We had a ball, we had a party. <laughs> so you didn't mind the rain at all? No. We, we were going to this film and we were sitting in the rain for ages so we just came back and we went up to the shops and we bought about five dollars worth of lollies, put them all on plates and we just stayed in the tent all night and ate them. We had the Murray River running through our tent. <laughs> One of the more unusual side effects of the rain last night was that the scuba diving course had to be cancelled. Not so much because there was too much rain about, it was more that the above ground swimming pools were sliding down the hill. You'd have thought that the boys would have had enough of rain and mud, but boys being boys, no way. Paul Michaels, Eyewitness News. The gang show has thousands of performers, Australian and New Zealand scouts, who every year entertain their colleagues with a wide variety of acts, musical and comedy segments, short plays and dancing. Last night, after six days of rain, the skies cleared to allow the show to go on as an open-air spectacle. Channel O's Live Eye unit taped the event and beamed it back to the camp's hospital on the other side of the Jamboree site, so the scouts in there weren't missing a beat of the action. At several times during the night, it seemed the stage would burst when hundreds of the gang show performers filed on together. Today, the Jamboree continues with a full program, including 3,000 girl guides due to arrive for a tour of the campsite. Tracy Dyson, Eyewitness News Break.
The guides and their younger sisters, the Brownies, arrived from all over southeast Queensland and headed straight for the tent distributing blue forms to enable them to fulfil their goal for the day, a challenge badge, won by observing and writing about the Jamboree. But the scouts, after more than a week at the camp, were more interested in simply having a good time, and each contingent had their own way of enticing the girls to their tents. When you say wanted girl guys, I mean, what do you want to do with them? <laughs> you don't want us to and any guide in doubt as to who was who on the sign, the boys from 601 Victoria were happy to explain. I'm Turkey, he's Darky, Ralph's gone, Ralphie. Harry was Harry. 12-year-old Susan Parry from Manly Loader Guide says she had had enough of the scouts' antics early in the day. You walk past and they give you a rating of what you were. What do you think about all those sort of activities? <laughs> Real good. <laughs> Most scouts eventually just had to face the fact that the guides were interested in adding badges to their sleeves, not mingling. We're offering them lunch. They're turning that yeah, they're not all. We can't have them. But there were no barriers last night for the annual gang show of scouts and guides to entertain a crowd of about 22,000. The variety night is one of the most famous traditions associated with the scouts and is the longest running show of its type outside of London. Even those at the Jamboree Hospital last night were not left out. The Scouts' own television station recorded the event and Channel O's Live Eye unit enabled them to link it directly to the hospital. Tracy Dyson, Eyewitness News. Don't worry Mum, the bags are already packed and the kids are ready to come home. And their leaders will make sure they don't leave too much behind. And don't be too concerned about some of them having to get up at 3.30 in the morning. Well, they certainly aren't worried about it. I've been up at 5 every morning, so half, half, I'd rather half sleep in. we started some of the mornings. Yeah. yeah. You see, they've got it all organised so that no one drags the chain and makes everyone miss the bus. I'm going to sleep um, 25 to, uh, no, 20, 20 to a tent, just on the plastic, and their scout uniform with them, nothing else, and then they'll be up and away, as simple as that. And what a time it's been, 10 days of doing everything a boy just loves to do. And they'll be falling all over themselves to tell you all about it and to show you the photos of all the things that mean most to them. Oh, yes, yes. You can wave to your neighbour and ask him to pass the paper because there was only one, one roll up at the end, you see, and they passed it right along. <laughs> Are the memories. And what lasting impressions will they have of Queensland? You can't trust Queensland weather. <laughs> we haven't seen so much rain in ages. No. Yeah. Well, there you go. Welcome to the Sunshine State. <laughs> So home they go, and for the next day and a half, 200 buses plus cars, trucks and vans will move the 17,000 scouts out of here, a mammoth task for Transport Officer Angus Chalmers. It's been a headache for the last couple of days, but uh, we had no problems getting them in, so we anticipate we'll get them out. And by Sunday, it will all be over, and next year it'll be somebody else's problem. But there's no doubt it's been a great jamboree. Paul Michaels, Eyewitness News. Queensland scouting officials are delighted with their jamboree. Despite rain and a single tragedy, they're convinced that each of nearly 17,000 scouts had the time of their life at Collingwood. Of course, it's all a bit of a drain on a young constitution. And when it comes time to go, it takes every ounce of that scouting discipline to keep those Boy Scouts moving. Now they've been on the run for eight or ten days, and they're just totally knocked up, but uh, I think they'll get through it. I don't think they're really impressed with the idea of hanging around the camps like picking up gear, you know? <laughs> The move-out began at 3.30 this morning, and all by our Queensland scouts were scheduled to have moved out in a fleet of hundreds of buses within 12 hours. Among them, the Singapore troop, which left a trail of Singapore T-shirts and new friends behind it. They were popular right from the moment they introduced themselves. We are from Singapore. Mighty, mighty Singapore. How we get to Collingwood? How we get to Collingwood? But that was the beginning and this is the end. And under those circumstances, you can't blame a Boy Scout for a long face. Still, there's always next year when the tents come out again and the buses full of eager faces roll up again at a site just southwest of Sydney for the 14th Australian Jamboree. Graham Bauer, Eyewitness News. Norman Johnson, Chief Commissioner of Australia, Representatives of 22 overseas countries, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 13th Australian Jamboree, where 75 and scouting thrive. The Jamboree Council is thrilled to know 
that over 16,500 scouts and leaders have come to Collingwood Park in the city of Ipswich to enjoy an exciting, adventurous jamboree in a Queensland bush atmosphere. We are sure that this jamboree will equal the high standard set over a number of years.
How much? One hour of the best. Have you ever seen the disruption of a car? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, well, hi, I'm Les Sheehan. I'm a driver with the Brisbane City Council. Uh, brought the Lord Mayor, Alderman Roy Harvey up today. Um, not a bad fella to work for. Quite an interesting job, a bit outside the ordinary. Very long hours, but you get used to it. And um, if there's any scouts from Charleville Troop here, I'll say hello to them. That's my old troop. And uh, hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Hey, I'm John McMahon now, I'll try for Mr. Bill Kurtz. He's a Minister for Environment, Valuation and Minister of Service. Good job, we've got long hours, but you get used to it there, and we're pleased to be here at the Jamboree. And uh, I'm looking around here, everybody's enjoying themselves. <laughs> I think everybody's turned down here, never mind off. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's enjoying itself here, and it's a, just a, oh, a big city itself here. And it's lovely to see all the different countries and that, you know, and uh, all mixing. We got these scouts in Scotland? Oh, yeah, plenty, yeah. I used to be one myself, as a matter of fact. Who about? In Glasgow. Really? Glasgow Boy Scouts, yeah. It brings back old memories, this, there, when you, when you look around and see them all, all the uniforms and that. Uh, my name is Gordon McGinn, I'm a sergeant of police, with almost uh, 25 years in the job. I'm driver for the commissioner, Mr Lewis. What else do I say? The Boy Scouts? No, I've never been a Boy Scout, unfortunately. I look like it's as though I might have missed out on something in my lifetime, eh? Yes. Tremendous gathering here, and I hope the weather's good for you. Hope everything treats you kindly and they don't get that storm that's predicted for today. That's the main thing. Oh, look, I'm uh, Senator Neville Bonner. Uh, I've never been a scout myself, but uh, many years ago when I lived on a place called Palm Island, uh, not far from Townsville, uh, my, all of my sons were members of the scouting movement. And my oldest son was very fortunate that he came from Palm Island one year to attend the jamboree that was held at Inogra. That's on the other side of Brisbane from where we are now. And I just want to say how pleased and proud I am to see so many of you here from various parts of the world in this great brotherhood of scouting. And I want to congratulate all of you who have worked so hard and saved your money to be able to come across here. And congratulations to your parents and all those involved who have assisted you to come here to Collingwood Park. Now, just briefly, let me tell you something about this area. Uh, as you may know, uh, before the settlement of this country by the people from overseas, this country was uh, occupied by Aboriginal people. I'm an Aborigine, and the area that you're in now happens to be the area of my tribal people, the Jagara tribe. So on behalf of my tribe, and I'm the oldest living member of the Jagara tribe, I want to say welcome to you all, and I hope that this jamboree for all of you will not only be educational, but during the time you're here, you're going to make many, many long and lasting friendships, because that's part of what scouting is all about. I have a brotherhood where we reach our hands across the world to shake hands with those from other countries and to join in that wonderful brotherhood of scouting. So thank you very much. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful jamboree, and I hope to meet some of you during the course of the time you're here. Well, my job as promotions officer was to uh, forward uh, group kits, uh, audio-visual displays and posters to the groups uh, in all states to encourage them to come to the Jamboree. Uh, that's been most successful, I feel, in that we've got 17,000 boys here and we expected 15,000. Uh, my job on site today is to uh, uh, look after the film crew, the newspapers and media who come to report the news of this great event. And uh, we also have a hostess corps who are here to greet the uh, guests as they arrive and conduct them on tours wherever they need to go. How long do you want? Uh, John, I'm absolutely thrilled with the um, way that things have turned out. You know, it's something like three years now since uh, Tom Roberts, the Camp Jamboree, came to see me in my office and that was before it was announced that Collingwood Park was going to be the site of this particular jamboree. 
Uh, he took me into his confidence. I've been in his confidence ever since. It's been a terrific relationship. It really has. And I've got nothing but the highest praise for Tom Roberts and for the people of the Scout Movement uh, who've involved themselves with the local council. Now, we in turn have attempted to do everything that uh, has been necessary uh, from a council viewpoint to make this a success. And um, I can assure you that the people of Ipswich are thrilled. They're thrilled to the marrow with the success of this jamboree, with the publicity that Ipswich is getting. And um, I might mention here uh, that, that there is a real point to that comment because often Ipswich is referred to as um, a place uh, near Brisbane, you know, and we were expecting that something like ha happened like this, uh, they'd refer to the Scout Jamboree at Collingwood Park, uh, 25 miles uh, west of Brisbane, and the lips which may not get a mention. Now, they're the sorts of things that have happened from time to time in the past. They're not happening now. Uh, people are aware that the Jamboree is at Ipswich, that it's a huge success, I'm thrilled with the success of it. Uh, all I hope is that the weather is terrific for these people over the next few days and uh, that we can see it through um, over the next uh, seven days that we still have to go, uh, that the program can be carried out and that all of these wonderful young people uh, will go home after the Jamboree with wonderful memories of Ipswich. Well, as Lord Mayor of the city of Brisbane which recently hosted the most successful Commonwealth Games ever. I'm particularly pleased to be here at the Scouts Jamboree and note the preparation and planning that's gone into such a successful Jamboree. And I know that it will be a success because their effort, their forward planning ensures the maximum success with the minimum of inconvenience and therefore to all the lads wherever they may come from uh, whatever state or New Guinea, I say greetings uh, to this state that hosted the Commonwealth Games and we extend to you the same hospitality and courtesy as we did Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Thank you indeed and I wish you all a very happy and successful 1983 for... Minor. Hello, Jeff. I'd like to introduce Ben Greer, who is the deputy leader uh, of the nice uh, you. You're looking up. How do you do? Your I'd also like to introduce the sub camp leader, uh, Jim Priest, who is. Uh, had more than just the sub camp leaders uh, part of the setting up this side. You're a little Can't do any better than that. Patrol activities of PA. Yes. And on the second, that is a patrol activity bar. Yes. And uh, a musician. You're a musician. What do you do to be a musician, Bad? We have to play an instrument, mm -hmm. and then we and we have to explain what uh, the instrument's about, say the piano, yes. we have to signify keys, 
play a couple of pieces. What do you play? The piano or something yes, else? Yes, I, I achieved it for the piano. Yes. And do you play any other instruments? No, no. that's all. One's quite enough, particularly yes. the piano, because it's a very hard one. What are these? Right. That looks like barbells. Well, they're for the fitness that you... Oh, yes, the yes. Badges. And that's the Pioneer badge. Yes. And that's the um, cord for getting... Cord for you get that when you've got your Pioneer and um, yes. the trial activity, uh -huh. too. And uh, you've got one round here. And what's that one? That's, that's my campcraft. Ah, yes, that's putting up and taking down tents and lighting fires. And things. Good. He's a very persistent photographer. I hope they come out. Gee, my trousers haven't fallen down yet. It would have made, it made a wonderful shot if it had. <laughs> And there's my belt back. With the, something, uh, something goes wrong in every circuit. The machine was cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the stamp that you should have received, the right. same as the one which appears well, on your wobble. But I can put that on my... Yes, you certainly can. Yeah. Good. Well, now, if you hold that for a moment, why don't I slip this on here? Yes. Is that be permitted? Back on. <clears throat> I won't tell it, you know. No, I'll be completely discreet about it all. Yeah. Here we are. It's not unregimental to have two woggles. No. Good. When you, you last man for the Vince Million. This is a kit What's of the things from Gilwell. It is a souvenir boomerang from us. It is a patch for your your blanket. It's the story of Gilwell and from one of the districts supporting this camp, the district badge. Terrific. Can anyone throw a boomerang? That one won't come back. Won't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe you. I think you're Drop. interested. We better push yes. on. Right out. Yeah. Fine. Well, it's been very nice coming to Gilwell. You're always welcome. And I'll, take I'll give you that back, too. Last Good. And uh, how you ever got that up and kept it up, I don't know. And we'll sneak a second one in, and that's definitely the end. Okay. <laughs> What's this going on? So, TV National 7. It's not. Well, we it's so. Right Two. Oh, I'm down here from Wagga Wagga and we've really come <laughs> just for the uh, a holiday, but we thought we'd help out for the day down here. Marlene Murchie. Well, I'm always very glad you came, aren't you, boys? Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Coach. It's a pleasure to be here. We're enjoying it. Oh, many. Actually, I think the boys are drinking too much coke and not enough water for the Queensland summer. Hi, my name's Lynn Ford. From? From First Camberwell, South Camberwell. Victoria. Victoria, same thing. Fantastic. Yeah. What about the lady beside you? Her name's Virginia. Virginia who? Virginia Hi, oh. I'm from the same group. Yeah? Yep. Oh, scout group We're cup Red. leaders, not scout leaders. Talk about the cups. Oh, we've got 24 lively little cups, haven't we? Yeah, adorable. <laughs> and we've got six leaders. Three male and three female. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What's your name? John Carl from Geelong. My name is Jason Reynolds. I come from Labrador, and today we're going um, 
at going for a tour. And uh, we're going roller skating first, then we're going uh, ten pin bowling. We're going for a full day. Well, the scout trip I'm in is 802, and um, it's, con it's got Toowoomba, Gladstone, and South Coast in it. And um, the we were here. We arrived a day before the other groups. We set up camp, and yesterday we helped the other guys set up camp. <laughs> My name is Stephen Boyd. My, I come from Victoria, First Montmorency. And I'm enjoying the Jamboree and I'm doing railway excursion today. That's all from there. Hi, my name's Scott and I'm from 8th Yarm and um, Scout Troop in Victoria. Um, uh, Want to know my hobbies? Oh well, I collect stamps, coins, and I reckon this trip's going to be really good. Oh, I'm going roller skating and tenpin bowling today, and um, there's a couple of things going to be doing within the next ten days or less, and I reckon it's going to be a real good trip. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Friends of Scouting in Australia. We are here in uh, Brisbane now from the Philippines. We arrived early this morning. We left Manila yesterday. I have 14 boys with me, and I'm the scout master. My assistant scout master is Mr. Bong Lausa. These are all boys from Quezon City, Negros Occidental, and the different regions of the Philippines. We came here to express friendship and to spread the scouting spirit of the World Brotherhood of Scouting. And these boys are coming from the different places of the Philippines. Uh, they are sponsored by their parents, and some of them are partly sponsored by the government. We had an audience with our president of the Philippines before we came here on the 22nd of December. And we are very much excited to see the beauty of Brisbane in this 13th Australian Jamboree, which has a very big publicity in the Philippines and all the regions. Every boy was trying to come here, but only 14 of us was, were, were able to come because we happen to be coming from an underdeveloped country, but we are trying to do our best to be at par with other countries as far as scouting is concerned. We are happy that we, have received, we were received very, very, very well at the airport. When we came this afternoon, there were some Boy Scouts, some scout masters who received us there and saw us to this place. Now we are putting up tents and we are very, very much uh, uh, impressed by the spirit of the Australian Boy Scouts who are helping us in putting us our tents because this is something new for us. We are not putting army tents in the Philippines. We used to, small, to use small tents only. But now we are happy that the development of brotherhood between the Australian Scouts and the Philippines is now going on. As you can see from here, that the Australian Boy Scouts are helping the Boy Scouts of the Philippines in order to make our stay happy and to make our uh, um, stay memorable. And we, we, we go, go back to the Philippines with an impression that the World Brotherhood of Scouting is really in action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Two boys, come here. Come on, volunteer. 
Come on, 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 Hello, uh, we are Filipinos. Uh, I'm Bong. This is Raymond and Arwin. We came from Philippines, Manila. And these are part time master Tom Dacayo, uh, Raul, and Melvin. Melvin. Uh, we all uh, from Manila, Philippines. Uh, we are happy at we're happy that we are here now to join the 13th National Jamboree of Australian Scouts and uh, we hope to make millions of Australian friends and other scouts from other nations. Well, uh, we came from the Philippines as I, I told and uh, we're living in Manila, all of us. Anybody here living in Castle City? No, we are living all in Manila. That's the uh, capital of capital of Philippines. Okay, happy scouting days. Happy <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.